and risk cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Spread the word of man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortune one. Paradise must be won. Paradise must be won Each day and each night Through darkness and through light Cry it out to the world Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In alhamdulillah in ahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina Salatu wa salam ala rasulhi al-kareem, sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. We will be talking, insha'Allah, about the lessons that I learned from al-Islam, from this beautiful religion of al-Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not hold us accountable of things that we are unaware of or uneducated about. So the lesson that I learned from this is all the religions that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they call into one thing, to worship one unique God, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and not to associate anyone with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when He created the creation, Allah created them not to benefit Him, but for the creations to benefit themselves by obeying their creator and being closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Closer to him by performing acts of worship, by doing ibadat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the messengers with one unified, unique message. It is not logical. For Allah to send multiple contradicting messages to humanity. Allah would never send two contradicting messages. And then He say to them, follow my commandments, obey my messengers. And where we're different, then He punishes one of us. Allah is just. It's not logical. Imagine وَلِلَّهِ مَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى And there is no comparison here between us and Allah. But imagine you giving your child or the person that works under you or a person that you have authority over and you tell that person I am giving you a direct order. I expect you to follow that order. And then you come around and instead of giving him or her one order, you gave them two orders. But both of them are contradicting each other. One says sit down and the other says stand up. That person cannot be sitting and standing up at the same time. That person cannot be under the sun and the shade at the same time. That person cannot be asleep and awake at the same time. That person cannot be dead but alive at the same time. It can't be and he can't be even if he wants to entertain your request. Therefore, it is not logical for Allah to send messengers 
and say, each one of you preach different than the other and then fight against each other. Let your followers fight one another. It is not logical. That's why when Noah came, he came with one message. When Abraham came, he came with the same message. When Moses came, he came with the same message. When Jesus came, he came with the same message. When Muhammad came, he came with the same message. Then why would Allah keep sending messenger after messenger after messenger? Because we as a human like to change things. We like to put our two cents in everything. Allah sends this book that is perfect, manual of our lives. And He says, if you follow it, you will never go astray. Nor will you ever be harmed. Nor will you ever feel sad or remorse for anything that you did. Just follow it. And you would be devoted, obedient, righteous servant. But we say, no, the book has to change. We have new ideas. The time is changing. The books must also change. And then we keep changing until the book of Noah is no longer the book of Noah. Because I add my two cents there. And then you add yours. And your child add his. And his great-grandchild adds his. And the book is no longer the book of God. Then Allah would send another messenger. To do what? To revive. Rectify mistakes that we did. Revive the book of Allah. And bring it back to its purest form. As Noah received it. And then the people of Abraham will do the same thing. They will alter. They will corrupt the message of Allah. Then Allah will send other messengers to do the correction. Moses came to correct the message of Abraham. Jesus came to correct the message of Moses. Muhammad came to correct the message of all the prophets, including Jesus. See, it was only recent when the Catholic Church, you were not allowed to eat meat on Fridays. But the church, they said, no, we have to abrogate that ruling. We have to dismiss it. Now, you're allowed to eat meat on Fridays. It was only reason that the nun in the Catholic Church would have a special outfit. A special outfit that is so close to Islamic women dress. Islamic dress code for women. Covering their hair. Covering their neck, their chest, wearing something decent. And then they say, no, we have to change that. Change after change. But in Islam, you will never find that. So God said one message. A lesson that Islam is teaching me and you, you and I, is that Islam will never change. In Islam, it will teach you. That everything that you do, you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't do to benefit Allah as we said earlier. No. You're only doing it for yourself. But you're doing it to please your creator. Your creator asked you to be sincere in your worship. To be honest when you're dealing with others. And he stated Clearly in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah, the teaching of the Prophet, that Allah would look into your heart. Allah would look into your heart. Nowhere else. And that's why everything that we do, we do it for Allah. Allah said, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِ He said, O oh Muhammad, say, O oh Muhammad, say it. 
my salah, my prayers, my nusuk, my sacrifice, my living, and my death, all of that belongs to my Creator, to Allah. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of all worlds. World of jinn and animals and humans, worlds that we know and the one that we're not informed about them. All belongs to that Lord. And he said, La sharika lah. My Lord has no partners. Wa bidalik. And I was ordered to do that, to worship Allah alone. I was ordered by Allah to be Muslim, to be a one who worshiped one God. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah said in the sunnah, Ya ibadi, wa inna awwalakum wa akhirakum, wa insakum wa jinnakum, kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahid, ما زاد ذلك في ملك الشيء. Allah says, O oh my servant, were the first of you and the last of you, the ends human of you, and the jinn, the demons of you, were to have the most righteous heart that was ever created for a man. That would not increase anything in my kingdom. It would increase nothing. It would add nothing to the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would not make Allah more powerful, richer than what He is already. Nothing that we do can add or benefit Allah. And then the Messenger of Allah lists things that Allah told us about ourselves, that we will cover them insha'Allah as soon as we come back from these messages. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, and see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Through darkness and through light. Confused, confused. Worried, worried, losing control, losing control. If you are a parent, these feelings may well be all too familiar. In a society in which we increasingly feel that we are losing our children. It's still possible to get it right. And Islam will show you how. Want to know more? Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we explore the ways to be. A good Muslim parent. Learn a series of beautiful Islamic techniques to help our children get the best in this world and the best in the hereafter. In 26 Ways to Be a Good Muslim Parent Every Friday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way 
that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 30083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Through darkness and through light. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi al Karim, Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. I was that close to tell you. Something about that, one of the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Aba Dar radiyallahu an. And in this hadith, the messenger of Allah said, Allah himself said, Ya ibadi, wa inna awwalakum wa akhirakum, wa insakum wa jinnakum, kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahid, ما زاد ذلك في ملك الشيء. Allah says, "O oh my servant, were the first of you and the last of you, the ends human of you, and the jinn the demons of you, were to have the most righteous heart that was ever created for a man, that would not increase anything." In my kingdom. It will increase nothing. It will add nothing to the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not make Allah more powerful, richer than what he is already. Nothing that we do can add or benefit Allah. And then he said, When ya ibadi, O oh my servant, if the first of you, and the last of you, and the ends of you, and the jinn of you, all of you had the most wicked heart ever, the worst heart ever, that would not decrease anything from my kingdom. And then he said, O oh my servant, were the first of you, the last of you, your ends, your jinn, all of you were in the same, were the same place, in the same location, asking anything that they desire, anything that they desire. Not you and I, not the people who are living on this planet, including the jinns, including the things that we don't know, and not only that, but from the first of us to the last of us. From Adam to the last person will be born. From the first of the jinns to the last of the jinns. All of them if they were in one place. And all of them ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything that comes to their mind. Anything. And Allah entertains every wish and every desire of those beings. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم He said that would not decrease. Allah said that would not decrease from my kingdom. Except as much as needle may decrease if you put it into the sea. Imagine. You go to the ocean. And you take a simple needle and you dip it and you pour it into the ocean and you take it out. How much of that ocean decreased because of your needle? Not much. Nothing. So if Allah gives us everything that we ever desire, it will not even increase except that much. Allah said, Woman kafara fa'alayhi kufr. And if you disbelieve, 
your disbelief will only harm you. It will never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not do any harm to the angel. It will only get back to you. And then Allah said, Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum. All my servants, all my slaves, all the one that I've created, innama hiya a'malukum. It is only your deeds. It is only your action and his statements. Oh, see how that come that I work for you. That I keep it for you. Oh, see how that come. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمِدِ اللَّهِ If you find good in here after, when you die, and you see yourself in a better place, in a comfortable place. When you go to your grave, your grave is paradise. You live a life of a king. You smell the frequency of Jannah. You can feel your bedding is from Jannah. And when the day of resurrection comes, you would be in better place. Allah says, if this is the condition then praise your Lord. Praise Allah. فَلْيَحْمِدِ Why? Because it was only from the blessings of your Lord. It was only from the ni'mah of your Lord. It was only from the kindness of your Lord that you were guided to an Islam and you were Muslim. Look around you. Look around you. And see the people. And look at what they worship. Look. Some of them worship trees. Wallahi thumma wallahi. I was so shocked. When I saw a group of women on their knees. Weeping and crying. Raising their hands. And I thought these people were really sincere. I don't doubt their sincerity. But these people, when I looked, they were worshipping a tree. They were praying to the tree. They were crying to that tree. So when on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah comes and you find yourself in Jannah, Allah is telling you to say, all praises is due to Allah. And He said, وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ Whosoever finds other than that, فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ Don't blame anyone else but yourself. Don't blame shaitan. Don't blame angels. Don't blame people around you. Don't blame but yourself. So as a mu'min, when that comes, and alhamdulillah, you realize this is who you are, then you are mu'min wa lillahi alhamd. لذلك إخوتي في الله When we do something and we understand the hikmah behind it, alhamdulillah. When we don't understand the hikmah, the wisdom behind it, alhamdulillah. One of the reasons that we all have to be unified in worship we all have to be under one banner, under one religion, under one faith. It's because otherwise we will disagree. And disagreement brings fight. And fight brings war. And wars bring hate. And when we hate each other, we will not be able to live together in peace. And that's why Allah said about Nuh, and we have said Nuh, and Nuh said to his people, "Abdu Allah, malakum min ilahin ghayru." Nuh said to his people, "Worship Allah. There is no other god for you but He." And Ibrahim said the same thing, and Saleh said the same thing. David, all of the messengers, the prophets of Allah, they said we should worship Allah. 
alone. Brothers and sisters, from the lessons that you learn from this beautiful deen, that we as a Muslim, we only obey one creator, one unique creator. You will never find a Muslim who will say to you, I am disobeying my Lord because of Mawlana, because of Imam, because of Sheikh. They will always obey Allah first and disobey anyone else. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the messenger of Allah said, إِنَّمَا طَاعَةُ فِي معروف. You only obey in khayr, in obedience of your Lord, in doing good, but not in to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another narration said, لَا طَاعَ لِمَخْلُوقْ فِي مَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ There is no authority, there is no obedience for a creature to disobey your Creator. No allegiance to anyone but your Creator. And if anyone disagrees and disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and orders you to follow, you say, no. I am a servant of my Lord. And I only obey Allah. And I will obey everyone else as long it's not contradicting the teaching of my Lord. This is what we have to say tonight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't you wait, the patient ones always win. Victory is with those who never let go of thee. When calamity strikes, it's another test in our lives. So take one day at a time, but never give up, no give in, even when success seems out of sight. The patient one. solution for humanity. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, dear viewers everywhere, uh, we are going to continue our theme, which is our schools, are they improving? But before we do that, we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us knowledge and to benefit us from this knowledge. Allahumma rizuqna ilman wa anfa'na bima allamtana. In the previous episodes, we talked about uh, some of the features or some of the things that would make us be able to judge that this is a good school. We talked about the vision and the mission of the school. We talked about the students as center of the tension of the school, center of focus, the focal point of the school. 
And uh, today we are going to continue this discussion. Uh, last episodes we were talking specifically about uh, what are the criteria that would help us judge